It says record. <laughs> but doesn't it normally have a little thing? That was recording. It is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you just yeah. continuously well, check just yeah. to make sure? Because it just, just went to record sure. and then all of a sudden oh, the okay. standby. I don't Perfect. remember if I deleted the last one. Okay, so today is a new term and today we're starting research methods. So get online, do your certification, do your pre-test, um, download your syllabus, do all that fun stuff that you have to do. Ms. Rapaci will be back tomorrow. Um, if there's any questions, just email us and she'll know. Um, so you mentioned something about a theory. Yeah. Okay. In the paper, we'll get into it probably more on Thursday. She left me because, you know, she takes care of me. Um, she left me the first week thing, the project. Maybe that's yes. the one you're talking yes. about. Okay. You are a psychology researcher. You have been awarded a million dollars to conduct a research study of your choosing. Okay, I told you guys this that we would be doing. I'll go through a little bit of that, but I'm gonna start with my theory today. This study should be one that will inform or evaluate psychology practice, such as a clinical intervention, or help better understand a psychological relationship. Okay, so basically you're going to come up with your own little research method. This is a very uh, typical class that you do in most social sciences. You might have ever been at the mall and they give you a clipboard and they ask you to fill out questions. Sometimes they give you a dollar or five dollars. That's called survey research. Okay, what they're trying to do is they're trying to figure out if something is or true or not. Okay, that's the purpose of this class. The purpose of this class is research methods. How do I collect research? How many people do I need? in a research protocol to um, figure out if I have something that's sustainable or something that really I should publish in a journal that says, yes, you know, we learned that so many people don't need this medicine or they do need this medicine. Okay, that's how all of that stuff gets sort of put together is with research methods. So you're going to read about that. It's very sciencey at times, I'll break certain things down. But what I am going to do today is I am going to teach you my theory, okay? The mother, father, child triad. So, when I got cancer the first time, I decided that I was going to treat it inwardly. And I decided, or as things came through with clients, I created my own model of therapy, okay? Now, as we progress in class, as we learn new theories, obviously you're not gonna find this theory in any book, only my book, when it comes out. You're piecing together, like you did in your other class, um, different theories that you like. So that when you have a client in front of you, you can be like, oh, I'm hearing this. This could explain this behavior. And oftentimes, that's all we're doing. Oftentimes with clients, all we're doing is explaining why a behavior is occurring in their life. To normalize it. Okay, I get that a lot. Thank you, you normalize things for me. You don't make, make me feel like I'm not weird or I'm not you know, an alien or something, when I'm like, oh no, this, this, and that. And if you can cite a theory, and you can go, oh, do you know that Freud or Jung or Adler or whomever stated this, or you can give them a book, then the client is like, oh. So what I started doing, was my own version of a research method, was I started collecting information about my clients and seeing patterns, okay? And that's basically how theories arise. We've talked about in your childhood, you made theories. You made theories about parents. You made theories about money. You made theories about race. You made theories about um, financial status. You made theories about clothing. You've made theories about all different types of things throughout your childhood and into your adult years. And it's with that box that you live. 
That's basically how you run your life, is whatever is in that trash can, the one that I was wearing the other day, you have that on you at all times, and your theories are the papers that were in that trash can. And when you meet someone of a certain race, or of a certain, certain stature, or of a certain religion, you go, oh, and you uncrumple your little piece of paper from your trash can, you read it and go, oh, this is my theory about this. And you treat that person or that situation accordingly. And where did we get those theories? Our parents. From our parents, okay, primarily. That's where psychology tends to begin. Psychology tends to begin at this zero to seven. Most psych theories are here. So we constantly say our parents, our parents, our parents. So if I'm constantly seeing that people are doing or not doing what their parents have told them to do or not do, I have to incorporate that into my theory. I think most of you will find that you believe that these things are learned behaviors from childhood. Do, do you agree? Raise your hand, you don't have to. But do you agree that most things and most people have things that they've learned from childhood or have tried to avoid because they learned or saw it in childhood, okay? So this is where psych really begins, okay? You don't have to begin there. I've talked about transpersonal psychology. I've talked about metaphysics. I've given you a slew of things. So today you're gonna to learn my theory. You already know parts of it. And I'm gonna give it to you and we're going to put real case studies into it. You may or may not believe that, and it's okay. You might believe one portion of what I teach you. Great, use it in your practice, put it in your paper, that's something you're gonna agree with. This is something that most people, psych like majors or not, believe. Oh, they must have learned that at home. So we already, most people already have a psychological belief that from zero to seven or childhood, whatever you call that, maybe 15, whatever your age range is, that something happened that marked you and that's where you learned all your stuff, okay? Most people believe that, okay? So, as I was treating clients and as I was going through my own process of healing, I started discovering different things. Now, there are no new theories there is no new story. Nothing new has been or will ever be created. Okay? All that exists, exists. It's just being reconfigured. Okay? Sometimes I do this activity with, this, with, with clients where I have them write their name on, on a paper and cut out the little letters and give themselves a new name with their letters. That's pretty much all we do in theory. We give it a new name. I have my names. And these things exist already. And this is ultimately what, as therapist, you will do. You will take the pieces of theories that you learn. You may keep the same name, or you may make it your own name. That sounds cool. And voila, you have a theory. Okay, so my theory is called the mother, father, Hi. child, triad. Okay, and I draw a triangle, mother, father, child. Now, what is the first thing a theory must have? A high What was that? A hypothesis. Okay, some hypothesis. You have to have some background. Hello? Yes. Hi, good. Leanne, I'm in the middle of teaching a class. Can I call you? 
way back. <laughs> I've just been picking up because the hospitals have been calling, so. <laughs> but I'll call you after I finish. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. My is surgeon. You never call. So it's too bad. <laughs> okay, so yeah, some hypothesis and some tenets, like some, some ideas. So we've talked about this a little bit before. What are some ideas that you have about human behavior? How do people learn behavior? Observation. Okay, observing, maybe society, TV, parents, what was that? Imitating. Okay, so imitation, what did you say, modeling? Yeah, when you see someone and then you do it. Right, and repeating that same pattern that someone else does. What else? Life experiences. Life experience. You've tried it out. Touch the stove. It hurt. Oh, that burns. What was it that you said? By what others say. Being told. Absolutely. Okay. So we learn through direct observation. We learn by our own lived experiences, various ways. And this is how we start developing our theory in life. Same thing is what happens when you are developing your theory of counseling. It's no different. The thing is, instead of the whole world, you're using your clients. That is why you are required to do 900, 1,000 hours of patient contact so that you can start saying, oh, I learned that in school. Oh, but that doesn't look like the way I learned it in a book. Hmm. And doctors go through the same thing, right? They see a cadaver, or they learn this textbook case of a disease, and then they get their patient, and the patient has 15 other symptoms, and they're like, what? It's not textbook? No. All these other things are involved, okay? So it's never clear cut, and this is where you start weaving and threading your ideas and they're yours and you are allowed to make up whatever the hell you want you're allowed and if someone tells you otherwise you send them to me if it works for you then it is your theory however two things every theory has a hole every theory has a hole Okay, so you have to assume that certain people or certain situations aren't going to fit in there, and it might be the limitations, remember we talked about limitations, the limitations of your theory. It might be that you don't like those people and you don't want to treat them, so you refer them out. Okay, but you have to assume that every theory has some sort of hole in it, that it is never perfect. Okay? And... Your theory is yours. They're based on you. So you have to keep that in mind that you are biased in your theory. Okay? You, you just keep these things in the back of your mind. Okay? So I created this theory and every single theory must have rules, must have tenets. Okay? So these are going to tell you the rules of my theory. My theory is that every single person, place, thing, thing or situation equals your parents. In my belief system, in my theory, in my philosophy, okay, and remember I told you many months ago how very few therapists give you like the rules of practice? This is this. I sit with my client and I tell them, these are the rules of this session or of the practice you're going to do with me. So that they know right off the bat what I'm doing. So we have a common language. Okay, so you have rules or tenants or a common language. Super important, good morning, that we, <laughs> there are new faces, 
<laughs> and you look tired. It's for 10. <laughs> OK, so we need a common language when we speak to our fellow therapists and when we speak to our clients. So when you're creating your theory, you have to establish your rules of your theory. If your rule is the sky is blue, that's your rule. And if a client comes in and says, no, the sky is not blue, or you say the sky is green, and the client doesn't agree with, send them out. These are your rules for your therapy that everybody has to believe while they're in your room. So you guys have a commonality. That's the first, first thing we have to establish with clients. And it's rarely done. It's rarely done. So then people are left kind of like, what's this about? And we've had people. Katrill, I remember, made a comment about that he didn't agree with certain things of, of the therapist, or she was trying to like get him out of the polyamory and things like that. No, the client and the therapist should have a common language. So first things first, you say your language. In my theory, person, place, thing, or situation. Every single person, place, thing, or situation that happens in your life is a representation of your mother or your father. And I show this to clients over and over and over again. So in my steps, when I go through my steps, this is the first step. Okay? Second, we create everything. Everything that has happened, will happen, has happened in your life, you are the creator of that. Okay? This one can sometimes be very tough. Lately, even I have been like, damn, I might have to rewrite that one. <laughs> because I've been like, ooh. And I've been having conversations with some friends about this. Because it's, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. And it's heavy when it's heavy stuff that you're saying you're creating. Okay? But for now, this is part of it. Okay? Um, there's more. We'll get through that. But my main thing is that in a few minutes, what I ask my clients, tell me about your childhood, zero to seven. Tell me the good and the bad of your parents growing up. I get to see the whole picture of what the person's life is built on. Okay? So... We get our narrative, and all of you know this. Where do we get our narrative for our life? Origin story. Origin. Yes. Origin story and where? Conception. First is conception. Pregnancy. Pregnancy. Birth and zero to seven. Pregnancy. Third is birth. Or zero to seven. And why do we need this origin story? Why do we need this narrative? So what? What is our goal with having this? Yes, it's to fulfill the needs of the mom and dad, but it's first, before that, to prove them right. Okay? Our job is to have our Costco card, right? And prove them, parents, right. Now, what are we trying to prove right? What are we trying to prove right? That they're like right. They're wrong. No. <laughs> we're trying to prove that they're no. wrong? They're no, we're actually trying to they're prove they're that they're right. But right about what? About their issues or about their 
life story. I don't know. <laughs> Where do you, about your issue, exactly. Where do you get your issue? The issue that you build your life on. From your parents? No, from conception. From conception, yeah. Okay. You're trying to prove this right. That is your job. This is my theory. This is what I tell my clients. You sit down, you come to me, I ask you a few questions, and then I tell you. Oh, this happened, that happened, and this happened. This is what you think about yourself, and all it is is a story that you got at conception, and you need to prove your parents right that you're not wanted, that men are better, that they were broke and couldn't afford you, that you're a piece of shit, that you're the king of the castle. Whatever the story was. And you're going to spend your whole life
This is what happened at the moment of conception. Your parents, based on the state of mind in which they were at, became you. And you will drag that story and weave yourself into that story. You will make it true at all costs. At all costs, you will make it true. That's why you create everything. Until you decide to rewrite your story. The moment you start to rewrite your story, which hopefully for me is the goal of therapy with my clients, then you start creating new things. Voila. Okay? But they have to understand that. And this is important. And Jennifer said this earlier, and I'm going to bring it back now. Every single, what is this? Person. Person, Person. Place. place. Thing. 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 Situation. Or situation in your life that covers everything is a representation of your parents. Why? Why do you need, if that bottle falls on the floor and gets you all wet, to be a representation of your parents? Why do you need the car accident that you had to be a representation of your parents? Why do I need my chemo to be a representation of my parents? Why do we need, and I'm going to give a little disclaimer here, things that cause pain, things that are not positive. That doesn't mean that the good things aren't also your parents. But because people come to therapy for help and change, my disclaimer is that this is things that cause pain. Even if it's a zero, I mean a one. Doesn't matter if it is your child died or if you broke a nail. Anything in your life that causes pain and suffering is your representation of your parents. Why? Jen said it earlier. What do we need Pain for? What do we need to? Always motivated to help. Okay. Well, you are motivated to get help because of why? What didn't you get as a child? Love. Okay. One of the rules: you didn't get unconditional love. Number five, you did not get unconditional love. Nobody in this room, any client that has a problem with it can walk out. There ain't no such thing as unconditional love. You got to work your ass off to try to love yourself unconditionally. Ain't no one been born that loves you unconditionally. That is one of the rules. So therefore, Jen, if your parents couldn't love you unconditionally, every single thing, person, place, situation is representative of your parent. Why? What are you trying to get from that situation or that person? You said it before. What did you not get as a child? What did you not get met? Your needs. Your needs. Thank you. Your needs were not met as a child. Whose needs were met? There. Your parents' needs. Please write this down. Some of you have said, meant to me, meant to me. This is how it is. You need to know this inside and out. Every person, place, thing, situation is representative of your parents. I can never say that word. Represent, representative of your parents. You will get the steps in a second. 
You have created everything in your life to prove the origin story correct. Meaning you're a piece of shit, you're worth it, there's no time for you, you don't deserve to live, you are the love of their life, you're the only person that have ever should have been born, whatever that is. We will discover.